Hey friends, happy Valentine's Day. I'm Lisa with Made to Create with Lisa and we are here on the actual holiday uh, to just have some fun crafting. I'm totally done doing Valentine crafts but we're moving on to spring and I thought that we would do something springy and a little bit um, Eastery today. Uh, we are going to make a carrot. Now, um, for me, I am a huge gardener, my husband and I, and so we have a really huge vegetable garden. And so for me, as long as this doesn't look just Easter-ish, I thought that it would be really something cute that I could leave out um, just because we like to garden. So it could kind of be something you could leave out in the summer too. So that's what we're going to do today. We are going to use one of these... Um, canvases from the Dollar Tree and this one is six by eight it's the six by eight size and it's the stretched canvas um, and we're going to actually disassemble it and um, and make it into the frame that we're going to use today okay and then the other thing we're going to use is my favorite frayed ribbon um, and we're going to do something to it to, uh, to mark, make our carrot. Okay. So let's just go ahead and dive in. And I will get you, in. whoops, so sorry. There we go. Okay. Hello. Hello. All right. So we have the six by eight stretched canvas from the Dollar Tree. And then my favorite frayed ribbon, which is in our new uh, Stampin' Up. Um, it's the spring catalog, but they're now calling it the January through June catalog. Okay. And we are going to make a carrot. Now, what I did with this is I totally took it apart. So if you take this off and you take off all of the canvas, you will come up with just the... Um, the wooden frame part that makes the frame, okay? And you can throw away the canvas or you can save it for another craft in the future. But what I'm after is getting the wooden frame that's hidden underneath this canvas material here, okay? And what I have created is this really cute frame. So this is the wood frame that's underneath that canvas. And what I did is I took several fat popsicle sticks you can see I made a mess here. And um, I lined them all up on my table. I looked at how many that it took. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I took another one and hot glued it across the back. And then I trimmed off the ends and glued it to the frame. And I stained it. And so that's what gives that really cute um, shiplap background. And I know that we use the same... Um, background on the bunny um, tag that we made last week that was so cute um, and so it's just a, a look that I absolutely love now of course instead of staining it you could whitewash it you could paint it white you could do whatever goes with your decor I'm gonna have to get more of these popsicle sticks okay so this is gonna be our base and what I let's see figuring out what we're gonna pull in first. Okay, so this is our base and I'll pull that back in in a minute. What I'm gonna do first is I'm going to bring in a scratch piece of paper because we're gonna make a mess. What I did is I have some of the frayed ribbon, okay? The frayed ribbon. And since it's white, I wanted to make it orange. So what I did, I just have a little piece here that I'm gonna show you what I did. So I took one of our Stampin' Up! spritzers, all right, and I filled it with um, alcohol, all right? And then I used our pumpkin pie reinker, and I put for a whole, um, a full thing of, of alcohol, I did four drops. And if you want it more intense of a, of a orange, you could do more drops of the reinker if you want. But that's what I did. So I put it in here and I shook it up and look at what you do. You just spray it on your ribbon and look at that. It turned it orange. And I actually did both sides. 
to make it nice and orange. And the reason I used alcohol instead of water is because alcohol dries way faster and I wanted it to dry faster. So then of course you need to leave your um, ribbon aside to dry. So that's why I did it in advance because I wanted to make sure that it would be dry. So let me put that aside and I will pull in our finished ribbon. So you can see that when it, um, it dried, it got a little bit lighter, but here is the difference. Isn't that cool? Okay, so this is what we're gonna use to make our carrot. Now, our carrot needs some, some foliage at the top, right? So what I decided to use was the Stampin' Up! Forever Flourishing Dies, and I used this one right here with our Mossy Meadow cardstock. And I already die cut a ton of them. And this is what they turned out to look like. Do you think that that looks like uh, carrot tops? I was hoping that when we layered them all together that it would look like a carrot top. Okay, now, what I already tried doing with one of them, and I think it worked pretty well, so let's try it again. I'm gonna be really gentle, but I am going to be very gentle and wad one of these up. And the reason I'm doing this, I'm leaving the stem plain, but the reason I'm doing this is just to make it have some texture. So I'm gently, see how delicate these are? They're really skinny, so I'm trying to be really gentle so that I don't rip it. Okay. See, I just want it to have some texture so it wasn't completely flat like that. And you know what? I feel like I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna leave one flat just so it kind of is the base. But why don't we just do several of these so that our foliage, our carrot foliage, has some oomph to it. All right. I think that this is gonna be super cute. So did you guys watch the Super Bowl yesterday? I am not a football fan, but my son and my husband are huge football fans and my son's favorite team is the Bengals. And he was so excited that after his whole lifetime, <laughs> they made it to the Super Bowl. So he was a diehard fan, and he was there yesterday. He was very sad that they lost, of course, but um, yes, he was definitely watching. Okay, so now I've wadded several of those up. Here's another one I did. Okay, so I was hoping, see, now that they're all layered, I think it's going to look really cute, and it's going to be better that it's not completely flat. So there is our carrot foliage. Okay, so let's bring our frame back in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna lay, start laying these down. And I think what I'll go ahead and do is, um, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and, and glue them and just get those down there. So as you know, I have my really beautiful knot glue gun. And I'm just going to try to put just a little bit of glue just on the very base. And stick that down. Okay, I didn't plan that in advance. Let's see, that's very skinny. <laughs> I'll use my take your pick tool here and get that down there. All right, so now I'm just going to try to, um, whoops, layer up our foliage here. Well, for some reason it's not burning me, so I guess I'm lucky. Maybe because it's so little amount of glue and now I'm gonna say that and then totally burn myself. <laughs> okay, now it's getting kind of wadded up, but that's okay. We're gonna cover up that very, very base there. And I don't mind that it's gonna kind of hang out a little bit there. I think that that looks good. Cause it gives it more dimension, you know? 
Now, where I dropped that one right here, I have a little bit of piece of glue. So hold on, let me pick that off. There we go. Okay. Okay, so see how that is looking really layered and lots of texture since we wadded those up? I like that. Okay, so now we're gonna make the actual carrot. So what we are going to do is, oops. Okay, so we're going to start here at the top and see how I'm gonna cover up the base of those. And we are going to make our carrot by winding our ribbon back and forth like that. So I wanna make sure that my carrot's big enough. And I think that what I'll do is just do a strip of glue right across there to start us out. Okay, now that whole thing is gonna be stuck. <clears throat> and then I'll kind of overlap it so it kind of covers up that very first bend and we'll just start going back and forth. So I was trying to figure out how I wanna do it and I think that I will kind of just tack it as I go. I think that that's probably gonna be the easiest. So we will probably have some hot glue hairs, but we can get rid of those at the very end. So I'm putting a little bit of glue on the ribbon as well as on the wood so that it sticks. And I don't want it to be too flat because then I think it's gonna look weird if it's all like flat in the same areas. I don't know if I'm making sense. Yeah, I think it's working just to tack the ends like that because then it's staying. See how it's staying like kind of puffed? Maybe I'll put a little dab of glue in there too just to hold it down a little bit more. But I think that this is going to be adorable. Yeah, I think that's gonna hold. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're going to keep winding back and forth um, kind of going smaller and smaller, you know, as you're taking your carrot into a point. But you don't want to go small too early because otherwise your carrot will be done. <laughs> and I wanted to make sure that it goes all the way down. So I'm just going to keep winding it back and forth. So I know that this isn't like a super bright orange, but I love it. It's um, actually much more pastel than I was planning on. Ouch. Okay, there's a little bit of glue sticking out there. A little bit more pastel than I was planning on, but I actually really love it, so I'm okay with it. So we don't currently have any orange ribbon in the catalog, so that's why I figured we had to make our own. So I might need to go back and tack some of those down, but um, honestly, right now, I'm having a hard enough time <laughs> just trying to hold it all while it's winding, so I'll have to go back and do that. So I'm gonna start pointing it in here I hope I'm not blocking your view. I hope you can see this. Okay, there's a little bit of glue sticking out here, so I'm gonna, there we go. Okay, so I'm getting to the end here, so I need to start tapering that in to a point. So, what do you think? Do you think it's cute? So I thought about using some other white ribbon, some of our other white, plain white, and then spraying that, but I love the fray ribbon because of the texture. I'm getting glue everywhere here. I liked it having the, um, the texture. So I wanted to definitely use the bumpy ribbon as opposed to a plain white. 
Okay, just about at the end here. Trying to figure out how much more I want to go. I think I want to go one more bend. And then I think I will point it down at the end here. So I think maybe I will cut it at an angle. Will that work? Oh, yes. And I will put a little daub of glue there. Okay, look. How cute is that? Okay, now see, because we use that bumpy ribbon, it gives it tons of texture. And you know what? Well, maybe I'll tack that one down because it's kind of open. But in general, I don't even think it's that bad. And maybe it looks kind of cute with them billowed out like that. Let's see what this looks like if I kind of open them all up. Actually, maybe that's super cute like that. Look. Okay, I think this is adorable. All right, so to finish off our cute little tag here, or I mean our little carrot, um, I wanted to put a little bow up here. So I am pulling in our um, linen thread, okay? And you can see it's a big wad because I was trying this out before I went live. Okay, so I'm just taking one of our stamp blocks and what I'm gonna do is just hold it and I'm gonna start winding because I'm going to make, obviously our twine is just super, super tiny and narrow and thin. So I just want to make a little bow. And so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm wrapping it around here. And no, I have not done this before. <laughs> So we'll just hope it works. So I'm going to lay that down and hold on. I'm thinking here. I think that I don't have a choice other than to just slide it off. So what I'm going to do is slide it off like that. And I'm going to hope that I can hold it. So I'm going to keep it taut and then use this little piece to tie a knot <laughs> and let's see how well I can do that come on I think I've got it okay look at that now let's see if it's too big nope I don't think so I think it'll be cute so let me tie that in a knot now, come on, that was pretty impressive. <laughs> okay, this weekend, I held a huge event online, a virtual event, and I called it a Stampathon. And I had 11 demonstrators on there with me. Well, there were 11 of us total. And we all demonstrated one project. And the whole goal of the entire Stampathon was just to have fun and bring joy. And it was so much fun. Look at that. I think that's adorable. Okay, oh, and then the other thing I thought is to have a raffia bow too. And my plan was to do the raffia bow on the back and the twine on the front. What do you think? Either that or I kind of feel like maybe the raffia on the top this time with the twine layered on the back. Hey, Karen. Thank you. It was a little rough to hold it, but I kind of like the raffia on the top on this one. So let's put a blob of glue on there and a blob of glue on our raffia. Um, and if you wanted to, you could do like a cute little button or something in the middle of this. I'm going to hold it for a minute and I'm going to get my, well, maybe I can use my finger. 
There's a little blob of glue there that I wanted off before it dried. Okay, look at that. I see the bow really finished it off and brought it to life along with all of our greenery and you can kind of fluff it up. How fun. Okay, now the last thing I thought would be cute is, have you guys ever um, decorated with these cute little um, Scrabble tiles that you can buy? Now, of course, for, if you were doing this for Easter, you could say all kinds of different things. But since I was thinking, since it was gardenish, and if I left it out all summer, I was thinking that the word yum would make it like, um, first of all, it would fit because it's a small word. But then I was thinking that I could leave it out. What do you think? Do you think that that detracts or do you think it's cute? I think it's pretty cute, but I'll wait for your vote. Karen, tell me what you think. Okay, and then the last thing I was going to do, and I'm gonna add this after I get off because it's gonna to be too hard for me to hold it and do it online. But have you guys seen this beaded ribbon that's at Hobby Lobby? Oh my goodness, I love it. Look at it. There's two different sizes of little beads. And okay, you like the yum, then let's add that on. Okay, look at how I thought that this would be really cute to glue this around the frame to finish it off all the way around. Isn't that adorable? So I don't think I can hold it and glue it all at the same time. So I will do that after I get off, but I love that. So wait until the um, all of the ribbon over in the ribbon section is 50% off. And then, um, and then you can get this beaded ribbon. Okay, let's put the yum on. I know, isn't it fantastic? It's so, so, so cute. Okay, I'm gonna try to make this straight. So I have the, a gigantic cursive word yum in my kitchen. I think it's such a fun word. Okay, isn't that cute? So after I add this on around the rest of the frame, now we have our ribbon um, carrot made with our beautiful frayed ribbon that was um, spritzed with the spritzer to make it orange. And then our foliage that I cut out with the Forever Flourishing dies right there to make our greenery and our linen thread and some raffia to make a darling bow. I think it's so cute. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. I knew that that wouldn't take too long and so it was sort of a short and sweet um, project. So let me bring you up here. Actually, let me show it to you close up. How cute. Okay. All right, so let me flip the camera around here and I will show you one more time. I think it's cute. Now, like I said, you could put all kinds of different words. You could put a different style of tag. You could do anything you want on that. But I thought that the Scrabble letters were cute on that. The other thing that I wanted to show you is the brand new suite that's going to be coming out. I just got it, so I haven't had time to play with it yet. But the Waves of Inspiration, look how beautiful that stamp set is with dies to match. Okay, and this is going to be available for customers starting March 1st. This is one of my favorite parts. Look at those beautiful gems. I will take any uh, color of gem that I can get. <laughs> I love them all, but look at this. You kind of can't resist this beautiful designer series paper. I'm gonna try to show you the different designs here. Look at some of these. Aren't they so pretty? So these will be available March 1st to purchase. 
There's also some um, blue foil paper that goes with it. And um, I don't know, I I don't always, this is stuff, a set that's gonna be in the new catalog that's gonna be coming out um, in our new annual catalog. And so they're releasing it early. And I don't always buy stuff when it comes out early like this, but I just thought that this was so beautiful that I went ahead and grabbed it. So that is what I have to show you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you have a very happy Valentine's Day. And um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Don't forget that you were made to create. Thanks, bye.